How's it going, everybody? Are we there? Are we live? Is this thing on? <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Did everybody do something awesome for Mother's Day? I know, uh, like, uh, is it Canada has different Mother's Day? It feels like every year at Mother's Day, we talk about different holidays in different places and who does Mother's Day at different times and all that stuff. <clears throat> it's Mother's Day here. How's it going? Woohoo! Mark Sutton, subscribe. Thank you, sir. How many, what did that say on there? I couldn't hear. You can't hear. Good to see the squirrels. Canada is the same. Okay, must be the UK then or something. Just kidding, turkey. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, man, thanks for being here, everybody. I don't even... I like doing this, uh, you know, having it turned on ahead of time. So I'm going to keep doing that. It's nice. I don't get to... We don't get to race for number one, but... Uh, but anyways, it's fun. I like it. it. Gets you guys a chance to get in here beforehand. Uh, everyone's have a smart thermostat of Wi-Fi AC. What are we talking about? Video sends a while. Thanks for sharing all the information. Can you make one video using WLED with DMX? I don't think you can use WLED with DMX, but I'm I'm not sure. 12 in chat already? I know, Mark, right? That's what happens when I post it early like that. Um, so what I was gonna say to the answer of the question about the time. I saw the question about the time. Let's look at the poll. I know what it looked like a while ago. And it was looking like it was going to be the early time instead of the later time. So for those of you who have no idea what we're talking about, um, we're going to get back to in-person church here next week, which means I am not going to be able to stream at this exact time. I'm going to have to stream before or after. So we put out a poll to ask everybody. What's up? Uh-oh. Why are you sad? No. Oh, okay. You just came to say hi? Mm -hmm. You came to steal my Dr. Pepper. Nope. Didn't you? I haven't even poured any yet. Uh, let's see. Where was that poll? Where was that poll? Does anybody know where it went? How's it going, Ikafar? Oh, I'm late, Thanasis. Not, not very much. Just barely. Hey, from South Africa. How's it going? Mother's Day is May 30th in Sweden. Oh. I live in the U.S., so my mom gets two days. Oh, nice. Life blind. That's funny. Luckily. Oh, Tech Turtle's here. How's it going, man? Speaking of not having any Dr. Pepper yet, why don't I pour some Dr. Pepper real quick? And then we'll, we'll find the results of that, that stream thing. Nope. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Mm. Getting stolen already. If your wife, if you haven't gotten anything for your wife for Mother's Day yet, <laughs> I just wanted to drink out of it. It's be because it's Aiden. Because it's a cool Aiden Dale mug. Here, baby, put this Dr. Pepper bottle back in there, would you? So, this is Tech Turtle. Tech Turtle has, uh, what is it? An engraver we talked about. He has a laser engraver. I love you. Thank you. And uh, he's got these. He's got these available now. He sent me a bunch of them. We're gonna use them in the. We're gonna use them. But if anybody wants one, if anybody wants one, um, Tech Turtle's got a website. Let me post the link. Can you post it, Tech Turtle? I don't know if you can post it or not. I'm getting an, any extra stream tonight instead of working. I'm currently nursing a broken arm. Tony, how'd you break your arm, dude? Hope you weren't like up on a ladder, putting up lights. <laughs> <laughs> because then it would be my fault. <laughs> uh, thank you, Seamus. Mm, excuse me, my burps. But how about this thing, man? Is that not so cool? There's different colors now, too. Ah. And really, they're not very expensive. I think it was like 18 bucks is what he's is what he's got them for in the store, so... Pretty awesome. Thank you, Tech Turtle. If you need, uh, if, if, it, if the link doesn't work when you try and post it, then um, let me know and I will. Digging your solar display you have there. Thank you very much, Wayne. I like this. This is just a bar card. It's a custom bar card. And I played around with it a lot. Um, I posted the code for it in, um, the, in, in GIST. So it's GIST. Like in this, uh, it's part of GitHub. 
Um, but it's just Lovelace and it's just the solar. It's solar plus my whole house power thing. Begin to realize you don't bounce as well the older you get. Oh no. Oh no. Bounce off of what? Oh man. I got to hear this story. Wait, did I miss getting solar? Oh yeah, you must have, Seamus. I, or that's it, Kafar. Sorry. I've had, um, yeah, I've had solar for a little while. This is, this is, um, this is I, I, this is one of my favorite little things. It really is. It's really pretty nice because I I like knowing how much we're, power we're using. So down here is how much power we're using. Up here is how much power we're generating. Right now we're maxed out. We're generating the maximal, and this is uh, how much we have generated so far today. This is how much we have generated so far, or how much we've used so far today. This is how much we're using right now at this moment. All right, Quindor's here. Picking up my first touring caravan. Ooh, suggestions for making it smart. Oh, we had it. We talked about that. Um, I can't remember now when we talked about that, but a while back. I think, you know, they come with so many. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about some kind of an RV thing, right? They come with so many, like, uh, sensors already. If you can find a way to get those sensors into something like Home Assistant or at least into a different display. I want to be able to see them at different, like on my phone, I want to see what my water tanks are doing, if they're full or empty, or whatever. Propane, water, gray water, black water, all that stuff. Battery, battery charge, all those things. Okay. We got super sidetracked. Tech Turtle, I haven't seen it is. There it is. So this Raven's Ridge engraving site, this is it. I'll show everybody. Because I think this is pretty fun. So... These are the Aidendale mugs, and he's got the silver ones, which I thought would be the coolest, but then he's got colors now, and I looked at the colors and was like, dang, those colors look good too. So there it is, he's got colors, and this is the size. Like, it's hard to see on the picture the exact size, but that's the size compared to, like, my hand. So they're not massive, they're, I think they're 16 ounce, bigger than, bigger than a, a can of soda, so fit a can of soda or a can of whatever, and some ice. Cheers. And then you, but you got to sing the, the Green Dragon song. <laughs> ah, so cool, man. So cool. Blade, yes. Do I have your address? I'm, I'm sure I do. Remind me. Remind me. All right, 16 ounce. There you go. Uh, where did, the results of the poll, Blade. I know we had, uh, we had somebody new do the poll and I can't remember now who it was but I did notice that we did get uh one of the newer mods to help us with the poll and I know the last time I looked at it we were gosh it was a, so it was a long time ago the last time I looked at it 9 9:30 was winning over 2:30 in the afternoon let me look. Can we go back and back and back and back and see? It wasn't you, Thanasis? <laughs> I should have your... I should. So Frank's post on Twitter got me thinking about automating my water meter. Discovered, according to the internet, mine broadcasts on... Ooh! Anyone got recommendations? You know, I don't know about a, a 900 megahertz bridge. That's a good question. Does anybody know about a 900 megahertz bridge? It's pinned. Okay, so if I look at the pins, pinned messages. The poll. There it is. How do you find the results? <laughs> Jump to that. And, oh, no, 230. 230 is, is ahead. So it's time. If, let's see if we can. How do we, uh, can we post this for everybody? Uh, copy message link, maybe. See if we can do that. So here's, yeah. So here's show it on the screen, right? So here are here's the poll, and the poll is the current stream time of one thirty is not going to work for the rest of this calendar year. We may be able to go back to it next calendar year, starting in January. But for the rest of this year, we're going to have to change starting next weekend. So my available times are going to be nine thirty in the morning or two thirty in the afternoon. So we were voting. If you want 9.30, you vote for, you push one. If you want 2.30, you vote for two, number two. 
and we can sit here and watch them click by as we as we chat. That's fun, or that that works. <laughs> um, cool. So vote away, my friends. Vote away. Um, all right. Do I look? Do I look a little sunburned? I feel a little sun baked, except I feel actually so much better than I did a couple days ago. I realized yesterday evening that I had showered once since last Sunday. <laughs> what time is it now for me? It's 1.40, guys. It's 1.40. I look very bald. Yes, I should look very shiny. I shaved this morning. <laughs> um, trying to keep, trying to set up browser mod to pop up a picture entity of a camera on fully kiosk mode. Is there a better suggestion? Ah. <sighs> I feel like I got it working, but I, I kind of agree with you, Paul. I think the way I got it working was clunky enough that I didn't continue with it. So I'm not sure. Is this solar on your GitHub account? Or anyone post the link? If I go to my my gist, gist at GitHub, it's here. Oh, wait, let's find mine. Oops, I got to sign in. My gist, mine, mine, mine. There you go. Like the sound effects. Um, this I think is my whole, my entire Lovelace as of November. But there is down here like the bar card solar is right here. Let's zoom in a little. Oops. Wrong. Wrong window. So the bar card solar is right here. It's not, there's not much to it. But. Okay. Make it easy for you. Make, give that to you direct, directly. Is the dome up, Chris? The answer is yes. <laughs> now, you know that I am sworn to absolute secrecy, but I will share one image. I will give you one image. I'm only going to put it up for a minute. And then I'm going to take it down because I don't want the TV people to to get mad or to lose their um, whatever surprise factor, their wow factor. But I will show you one picture. Ready? There it is. There she blows. <clears throat> so we spent this whole week prepping the basement walls, increasing the footing, pouring the concrete floor in here, backfilling so we could stand on the outside of this, and then the last three days building this up to this point. There's a couple more parts on here that weren't shown in this camera. We did have one more day of work and we finished. A lot of the work that we did on the last day was on the backside. We have, I counted yesterday, and I'm going to take it down now. We counted yesterday and we have 10 panels left to put up. Most of them are little trim pieces. Frodoc. I like that, Peter. Frodoc. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, let's hack the, hack the dome cam so you can see for yourself. <laughs> oh, it's getting close, man. It was so fun. It was so fun. We had such a fun week. Um, I'm exhausted. And I got to go back the next couple of days, but it has been so fun. We had, gosh, we had, um, how many did they send? Three, six people came out from the Dome Company. The Dome Company is awesome. I got to say, you know, I, 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 I wasn't sure about this, uh, this dome. I wanted to do the, the cheap Chinese, um, one from AliExpress and just try my luck. Um, but we've now, I'm, I'm committed to these guys. These guys are awesome. I wonder why we don't have, the, we didn't have those poles. That would have probably been helpful. Uh, but anyways, we, we put it up a little bit differently. This is the, this is the dome company and um, they're great. They actually sent out, this probably had something to do with us having the TV show thing going, but they sent out um, two, What's that? Can't wait to see those mugs in there. Yeah, they're, they're going to be awesome. Going to be awesome. Uh, they sent out, so two of their like builders, plus they sent out their 
uh, one of their executives who's an operations guy. So he's a lot of the coordinations and the orders and the factory stuff. They sent him out and they actually, the, the owner, the CEO, the guy who invented the technology 10 years ago came out and was in there with us. Like we didn't get, we didn't get the, this is how you build it from two tiers down. We got it from the man who invented it. He came out and he was there showing us exactly how he likes to line them up and what he thinks is the best way to do it and stuff for three days. I mean, it is awesome. It is awesome. And he brought his wife and he brought his son. It was his son's 18th birthday and they still came out, spent three full days, three long days with us. CEO tool. Dang. I know. It was so fun. We had a great time. We really had a good time. Um, I, I guess I'll show you one more picture of, of all of all of the of uh, all the team, the team all together as we got done uh, right before they had to go back. We kept working after they had to leave yesterday, but I'll show you the, the picture of the whole crew, the whole team. So this is, you know that guy. <laughs> so there's me, the CEO is right here. Uh, this is their chief operating officer. This is one of their master builders. This is the CEO's son. This is the other master builder. A couple of my, couple of my contractors. This is Carlos, who's the, the, the head contractor that I have. He's an awesome guy. I love him. Jose and then Steven is a friend of the family that was up helping. We had a few more people that didn't make it in the picture, but this was our end of the day right before they were heading to the airport picture. So cool, man. So cool. This dome thing, I'm telling you, it is going to be, you're going to see a lot more of these. You're going to see a lot more of these. They actually told us that we're the only ones. You like the jacket? Oh, my jacket. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you like that? Um, no, this is the only one of these domes that they have built on top of a basement. Nobody else has ever taken the time to figure out what you have to do engineering wise and everything to build it on top of a basement. Uh, so now we know what to do. They know what to, well, they don't totally know what to do because I haven't told them exactly what they need to do because it was, I paid the engineer. So I guess I kind of own that information, but um, anyways, they were super cool and they're going to cooperate with us. We want to build a couple more and it was just a really fun, really fun day, really fun couple of days. So but anyways, enough about that. You'll see a lot more about that when the TV show episode is done and then I'll, I've got so much footage that I know the TV show people are not going to use that you'll get to see once the TV show has aired. Okay. All right. So let's do spot the YouTuber who realizes having a hat on ruins the lighting. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny you say that because the, um, uh, the guy, uh, our camera guys and our and, and the producer and stuff, right? The, the people from the TV show, they always make me take my hat and my sunglasses off. They made me take my hat and sunglasses off all the time. So I know when, when they're going to do a picture like that, or even now, like if I'm going to do a little selfie video of to talk about what's going on, um, I need to, um, I, I always, I, I'm taking my hat and my sunglasses off now out of habit because they always tell me to do that. They always make me do that. Um, are the sections heavy? They need to be, uh, petty bone or crane or just need some guys to hoist them up so uh raspy we used a drywall hoist to lift them up but there's two different sizes when you're talking about the ones that make up the roof there's a there's a uh like a four by four panel it's a little bit bigger than four by four but it's about four by four it's probably one and a half meters is my guess something like that so there's one and a half by one and a half meter panel that two guys can lift easy and for a while, we were using the drywall crank to crank it up. And then we realized this is silly. This is, that's just making it more awkward and harder. When it's just the small four by four panel, then let's just have one guy on that ladder, one guy on this ladder. We'll lift it up, have a guy on the roof that grabs it when we get up there, clamps it into place, and then we can start lining it up and bolting it in. Um, but for a while, we did use the, the, the crank and, the, and the, the lift. And then the, there are double panels. So there are some panels that are, uh, you know, four feet wide and eight feet long. And some of those are very heavy. You can lift up, you can lift them up. You can lift them, you know, two people to carry them and you can lift them up and flip them onto the, 
onto the drywall crank uh, lift um, with with just two people, but you wouldn't want two people to try and lift them up. Plus, they've got to go up to 11 feet. The very, very peak of that dome is 11 feet tall. Do a My Crib episode on the channel. <laughs> I, I've got so much footage that I need to do uh, that I will edit up. Um, the ETA for the air date, I don't know, Blade, but it has to be finished this year. It has to be finished this year. So my guess is they'll be done with editing and everything, and it will should hopefully before like October, November. Part of it's going to depend on how long it takes me to finish the thing, which is longer already than I would like. But Working on Lovelace today? Hey, Thomas. No? But actually, we might we might work on Lovelace today. So, uh, let's let's talk about what uh, I put in the video description for topics today. I could talk to you all day long about the Hobbit hole, um, but I know a lot of people came to have questions answered and have um, uh, you know learn some things, uh, home automation, LED kind of stuff. Can I show the videos of the build before the episode is aired? No, over. I can't. That's the thing. I, they really don't want me to. Extra stream will take seven days to air. <laughs> yeah, I have to wait for them to finish. I have to wait for them. Um, they've they've asked me and reminded me a couple times to not to not share to not post, especially the you know, I've got some really cool um, video of the dome as it's going up and a lot of that stuff that they they don't they want to be the ones to get to reveal. So that's what they're paying for. Um. What's a good capacitor value to protect the OED Mini from high switching currents? I don't know, Yusuf. I think there used to be, I don't know about to protect the D1 Mini. Will the UK be able to see it too? Uh, so when we watched it, we watch it here. We watch it here. Um, Building off the grid in Prime Video. So, this season 11 is the season we're going to be in. This is it. So, this is the season we're going to be in. I Oh, so it's only one review. <laughs> That's funny. That's too bad. Let's put on there another review. Let's do another review. Oh, unusual activity on this account. Oh, I can't do any? Contribute reviews to other content. Oh, wow. Gosh, okay. I don't like my reviews. I haven't done any reviews in a long time. Anyways, but it, yeah, it'll, we'll be on season 11. And we've just been, we've just bought this. We already bought the whole season. But so far, they've only published four episodes. Um, but they're every week. So they might want it. Maybe that's why. Maybe they want to get done by July. They'll probably put us like right towards the end of the season. I know I've been bad. <laughs> I was taking free stuff and doing reviews. I'm, I'm naughty. I, will, I The kids were, but whatever. Uh, no, last time I, ch I checked the VPN, uh, the same problem with Amazon banned from reviewing. Why? I don't know, Yusuf. I, I think there's been too many. There's been a lot of fake reviews out there. And um, when I, if I ever got something, because we did get some things and People, they would ask, you know, do a review, do a review. So we did a review. We can't get season 11 on UK Amazon video. No, streetwise, no. Maybe you will eventually. Um, if, if we can't do it here, it also is on the DIY network, which is, I think, part of Disney Plus. Not Disney Plus, Discovery Plus. Just check it out. Just check out watching DIY Network in the UK and see. Um, I will. F I'm sure that they will not want us to. Yeah, see, it's part of Discovery Plus. So, so what you can do is when it's out, when it does come out, you can do. You can start the free trial for seven days, watch it, and then cancel the trial. <laughs> What is this live stream about, Dave? I don't know. It's not. I, I'm trying to keep track myself. I I don't know. Huh? You're right. What is this live stream about? Um, 
Well, what it's supposed to be about is home automation and uh, home automation and LEDs mostly. But I'm also building this crazy little Hobbit house, uh, big dome thing. So we've been talking about that because that's a side. It's not on the Danish. Doggone it. Okay. Well, I, I've asked already. And I will continue to pester and find out what we can do for you folks who are. The trial is only in the U.S. too? Jeez. Man. Is that on the Danish? Kenneth, are you in Danish land? I didn't know you were in Danish land. I thought for some reason I thought you were in Canada. You can always do a VPN. You can always VPN. Any hooser. Any hooser, what's it? Um, there is a lot of squirreling going on here. There sure is. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get right back on topic pretty soon, but I will, I will continue to ask them, uh, how we can get our, um, our, our international friends to be able to watch it. It's called Denmark. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a stupid American. You know, stupid Americans. We, we don't know our geography beyond the borders of our own stupid country. Okay, so uh, in the title of this video, the title of the stream today, the things that I I need to do that we can do together are, <laughs> thanks, Polson. <laughs> thanks for sticking up for Denmark, Polson. I, I apologize. I certainly mean no offense. <laughs> Dang you. Who did that? Who did that? Mike47? Stinker. <laughs> It ain't a Dr. Z's live stream without squirrels, right? You got me. You got me good. Oh, I hate that. Cough, cough, torrent, cough, cough. <laughs> I'm sure there is some um, outside the, the... Anyways, that wasn't you, Blade. It wasn't you. That was fun. Okay, sorry. You're gonna, I, I gotta stay focused, focused, focused like a laser. Climate entities. Your wife hates you now. <laughs> Climate entities. So... What we got going on in the Z's house here, in Dr. Z's house, is uh, the transition between my old home assistant, which I think is working today. Yeah, look at that. Surprise, it's working today. So this is my old home assistant uh, entity, or my home entity, silly, instance, and my new one. And I'm making transition. I've transitioned, I think, all of my Tasmoda devices, all of my ESP home devices, all of my Zigbee devices, um, but I haven't gone in and done a lot of the interactions. What is the squirrel reference? Uh, Up, and Schumann, the 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 movie Up, um, with the dog, who he's talking, he's all this, and then all of a sudden he sees a squirrel and he goes squirrel, and he goes right back to what he's doing. So, squirreling around is what I do a lot. I I, I try it. It came from me at the very, very beginning of my streaming days a couple years ago, um, always getting distracted. I wanted to answer everybody's question. Every single question that came on, I wanted to answer. And, and they were all very different topics. And so I would just go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And um, yeah, we, we started calling it squirrels. And so now we've got We've got squirrels all over the place. We've even got dancing squirrels like this. Yeehaw, we can play a little song that I can't let sing or can't do without singing along, at least talking over. Because then they will give me a copyright infringement to take away my $8. That's about what I make for squirrel. Squirrel equals distract. I need to split myself into multiple people. <laughs> What's changed? I don't think anything. Um, all right, C Sharp Worm, how's it going? Jonathan at Superhouse. Nicked the squirrel's idea too, did he? <laughs> good. That makes me feel good. Oh, which, by the way, I I don't know if you guys noticed. I haven't gotten a chance to listen or hear uh, uh, it exactly at all. Thank you very much for subscribing. My my video, my little box is so small. My eyes are so old today. Um, but uh, on the Home Assistant release podcast this week, Ben, Ben from Bruh Automation was on. So I'm gonna have to go back and listen to it. I'll do it in fast mode, but because uh, I think because they go on, on for a while. But um, that, that was kind of kind of cool to hear that he was on there with those guys with Frank and Paulus and whoever else. That was cool. So, anyways, back to Home Assistant for a minute. So what I need to do is make the climate control entities for this. All right, 
CMDR, thank you for subscribing. Um, he lives, right? So what we need to do is make climate entities. And here's why. So I have this node red flow, which, which I've been copying over from my old home assistant. So this, this old thermostat flow here, which was working pretty well. Um, it's this one here working pretty well, but, uh, part of what I was doing here was controlling the climate entities so that it would just turn off the climate ent entity, not turn off the AC, but turn off the climate entity. And the reason that I'm doing all this, this might not be applicable to everyone, but the reason I'm doing all this, yay, node red. <laughs> um, the reason I'm doing all this is because I don't just have air conditioning and heating. We also have a whole house fan. So it's a big fan in the attic. And when it turns on, I have some motors on some windows that open a couple of windows, especially one in the basement and a couple of the rooms that were really hot. And the ceiling or the, the fan in the uh, attic sucks all the cool air from outside, especially down low in the basement, sucks all that cool air up through the house and then spits it out the out the attic, which also cools off the attic, which cools off the whole house too, because usually, at least around here, the attic is really hot. You know, the attic is going to be 20 degrees at least hotter than what's inside your house. Um, uh, so it helps to keep the attic cool, which cools off the whole house as well. So this flow, this node red flow that you're looking at here, manages what's on and what's off based not just on the inside temperature of the house, which is how most thermostats are going to work. They just looks at the inside temperature and it's like, oh, if it's, if it's too hot, I turn on the air conditioning. If it's too cold, I turn on the heat. But what I've done is if it's too hot in the house, first thing I want to know is, is it hot outside above a certain temperature? Because sometimes it's hot in the house, but it's still a pretty comfortable temperature outside. And maybe the thing to do is to turn on the fan, the whole house fan, and bring in cool air from outside instead of turning on the air conditioning. Because running the whole house fan is a fraction of the power consumption that running the air conditioning is. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. And I started, I started transferring that over to, to uh, my new home assistant, home assistant blue. But then I got to the point where I was turning on and turning off the AC and I realized, oh, I don't have climate entities. Make a template for it. I would know. I, would, I don't know how, Themi. Maybe you can show me or teach me or show. Give us an example. I don't know how. Blade is happy. He got to see Node Red. <laughs> oh, did they mention Node Red on Wednesday too? <laughs> Good. Ah, one thing I did notice, or talking about Node Red, one thing that did come up was that. There really isn't a good equivalent for the um, climate entity yet in node red. So there are thermostats. There are nodes that are thermostat like, which will turn on or off a switch. So a relay basically, which would turn on or off your, hair, your heating or air conditioning based on a temperature sensor. There are some of those, um, but nothing that is nothing that works quite the same way or quite as well, I guess, with as um, the home assistant climate entities. So we're going to make a couple home assistant climate entities. Um, the one of the um, downsides is that the, the of all the user interface stuff that we have in home assistant now, you can create a lot of entities in home assistant through a user interface. But I don't think and maybe you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you can create a uh, climate entity through. I'm not going to update right now because that'll take us a while and may breaks. But I don't think you can create a climate entity through um, the user interface. Does anybody does anybody want to disagree with me on that? Because that would be cool if you did. I wouldn't mind. I would not mind at all. I'll give you guys a minute. Oops, sorry about that. I bumped my mug against my mic. <laughs> Why Matt something will he go bonkers hating it? Uh oh. 
Just don't get Frank started on Node Red. <laughs> Everyone's got opinions. That's okay. And only some are correct. <laughs> it's hard. Isn't it hard, Blade, being the only one who does things right? I feel that way all the time. <laughs> I love saying that at work. Kenneth hates it, too. Ah. Haters gonna hate, hate, hate. Actually, I didn't use Node Red for a long time, but I like to try and use it when I can because there is some advantages to it. But Home Assistant's also gotten better and better and better and better and easier and easier and easier. So, uh, but it doesn't look like there's a, you know, add an entity thing here. Maybe we can add a device. Can we just add a device? No. Yeah. There he is, entity. So, I don't think we can just add a device. So that means YAML. It's YAML time. YAML time. Do, 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 YAML time. And no template entities are available through the GUI yet. Oh, okay. So there you go. Um, perfect. I have a reminder of that and nudge it. I love Node Red. <laughs> Node Red for the win. Okay. Well, that means, you know what that means. It's time for, should we use Visual Studio Code to do this? We're gonna have to go into our configuration.yaml. Is there a is there a dark mode for this? It's burning my retinas. How do I dark mode this? Ugh. My dark mode's on, I think. Yeah, it's not dark moding. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I need some dark mode. You can reload the generic thermostat without restarting Home Assistant. There is a dark mode inside Node Red. What on earth is that? <laughs> Thank you for subscribing. It's so bright, I know. I'm sure that there's a way to do this. I'm sure there's a way. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. Terminal. Edit. Because I know, I'm sure, in settings. Where are settings? Oh, down here. Settings. Command. Let's go to settings. Uh -huh. Workspace. Bottom. Oh yeah. Bottom left for settings. Okay. Got it. Extensions window. Window. Title. There you go. Text editor. Brackets. Color controls editor. Uh, oh, come on. There's got to be. Type theme. Aha. Ah, thank you. What? What happened? Where'd it go? It was just there. Oh, thanks. Did I not save it? So there's quite a few of these. Oh, there it goes. Oh, wow. That's better. Whew. Okay. But now we got to check out some of these. Ooh, Abyss. Abyss is kind of nice. I think I'm going to go back to Abyss. Ah! Solarized isn't bad. Okay. Solarized. Tomorrow night blue. Well, that's kind of nice. Ooh. Red. That makes me feel like something's very wrong. <laughs> Visual Studio Dark. Dark Plus. Which is default dark. High contrast. I don't seem to see that change. I think I'm going to go with Abyss. I'm going with Abyss. Okay. Now that we've screwed around and squirreled one more time. Huh? <laughs> you like Dark Plus, C Sharp Worm? I'm going to go with this for now. Okay. Now, this other thing that's burning. Thank you for subscribing. We haven't done any of these yet. Let's do Farting Unicorns. Um, yeah, you use Abyss. So anyways, what, what we have to do here. What we have to do here um, is create some climate entities. Now... Let's not reinvent the wheel, okay? Let's go to my other, my other, uh, 
which means you get here, my old one. And we'll just kind of copy them. Uh, we may have to change the names because when I imported them into, when I changed my entities, I think I may have to change some of the names. Thank you very much, Chris, for subscribing. Oh, it's so fun. More unicorns. Uh, so let's go here. We're going to go into the config. Now, my old home assistant, I split up the config. You guys remember that? Some of you that have been around a long time, remember, I went, uh, Frank came on the stream and we split up my configuration using packages and all that stuff. And I think I'm more of a put all my clothes on the floor in the room so I can find what I'm looking for kind of guy. I know that sounds horrible to some, but I just kind of like, I don't, I don't care that everything is just in one file. So if I just keep everything in my configuration.yaml file, then I know where everything is. And I don't have to click through a bunch of folders and try and sort out where something is. I'm, there's probably other ways to find it. You can do a search in in um, Visual Studio and all that stuff. And so I understand that maybe that's not everybody's favorite way to do it. Um, but I think for now, at least, because I don't think I'm going to be doing a lot of YAML writing directly, other than these kinds of things that aren't available in a user interface, uh, uh, option. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to do everything just in the configuration.yaml. So we're going to go to my thermostats. This is my folder. This is my old home assistant folder. And these are the, the these are the, um, climate entities that I had before. So let's start with the AC units. So I had a YAML file here that had one, two, three, four air conditioning units, it looked like. Four air conditioning units. So let's see what we got here. We got a generic thermostat that's the upstairs heat. So this is the furnace. So I say air conditioning units, but I guess I mean the HVAC unit. Because in our house, we have a, we have two of the ac heater or ac furnace uh heat exchange kind of units right the big air moving units we have two of those one upstairs one downstairs but then we have the radiant heat in the floor which has seven or eight sections and each of those has a little relay that turns them on and off late much got lost in the garden oh do you have a good time in the garden how you doing sir good enough thanks for being here buddy miss you when you're not here <laughs> took me ages to get used to separation config. I don't know I like it. I'm kind of with you, Mark. I'm kind of with you. I I'm, I think it's okay if you don't want to separate your configuration.yaml. And I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to keep doing it this way. So here you go. Anywho, so this is the therm, uh, the furnace one, which honestly, I don't even think I'm going to include this one because we, n we never turn on the, the furnace. We We don't. When we first... Well, for a while there, we were using the furnace a little bit and then the radiant heat in the floor the rest of the time. And now we haven't turned on our furnace to blow hot air in the house in years. So I'm just going to skip that one completely. This one I do need. So this will be a generic thermostat for the upstairs air conditioning. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Sensor average upstairs temperature. So I'm going to need that too. Uh, maybe we should do that. First, we'll do that. We'll do that before I actually copy this over. We'll talk about this for a minute, and then we'll we'll go back and, and do this. Um, for a party, when I have a hundred thousand subs ready in automation, which fires at the one. Oh no, I don't have that tech junkie, but I need it. How close am I? How close am I? I should be pretty good. Check general in Discord to vote. Oh, for the new poll, new stream times closing in forty five minutes. Currently, two thirty Mountain is leading. And if you go to general and pin, C sharp worm, can you can you post the link there? Let's make uh, let's do this. Can you post the link here to that uh, Discord thing again? All right. Um, okay. So what you do when you're setting up one of these generic thermostats is uh, I don't know why it's called heater. Let's go in. We're going to go in and st and we're going to look at the documentation again and see if anything's changed. I don't think it has. Um, so you have to define which entity you're going to switch on and off. And in this case, it's heater. 
it's called heater. And I don't know if they've changed that or not. That's what we'll look in the docs for. Um, but anyways, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really have to be a heater. In this case, the switch that it turns on and off is actually turning on or off the air conditioning, the relay that turns on and off the air conditioning. Um, and you need a temperature sensor. So in this case, what I was using was taking a bunch of temperature sensors in, in the upstairs part of the house, averaging them together and, and creating a new sensor. And then from that, and then I was using that new sensor output for this. So I'm gonna do that again. So I'm gonna make this average upstairs temperature sensor again. Uh, then let's see, you got a minimum temp and a maximum temp. And I'm trying to remember, what the, oh, that's because uh, if it, it, it gives you like a, a graph or a dial, uh, you can do it like on Lovelace, you can make it the dial. And I think that gives you what the minimum shows up as, like if it gives you a graph or if it gives you a bar or something. Uh, it shows you the minimum. So, th so basically, if it's as it's measuring what the temperature is or what it's showing you, the temperature is gonna is uh, according to this. It gives you a minimum and maximum, so that it's not like zero to five hundred or something, and then you wouldn't be able to see it. Okay. What are we doing so far? Nothing. <laughs> is that what somebody said? <laughs> really? <laughs> Thought we were doing pretty good stuff. Just kidding. All right, initial HVAC mode. Okay, so this we'll look at the documents again. This is how you set the mode. So this is like when it when Home Assistant first turns on. What do you want it to do? I'm actually not going to use. I might use cool, but I think I might not. I think I might change this and just use off, because if I if I use off, then that lets me use node red to turn it to on or off based on the outside temperature instead of having it default to being on. So with this, the way I had it in the past, there were times that if Home Assistant restarted, it would, instead of using what Node, because Node Red was only checking the outside temperature, I think every 15 minutes or something. I can change it, but that's what it was doing, is checking the outside temperature every 15 minutes. And so sometimes if Home Assistant would restart, instead of you know getting the instructions from the Node Red flow, it would just turn on the air conditioning when I didn't want it on. I wanted the quiet cool fan. So I might change this. Gauge graph. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ever tougher. Ever tougher? Ever thoughter. How's it going? <laughs> okay, minimum cycle duration. Okay, this is important because sometimes in your air conditioning units, especially, you don't want them to run for like a minute and then turn off and then turn back on and then turn back off and then turn back on and then turn back off. Uh, it's not good for your air conditioning equipment, right? The compressors and whatever. So you want to make it uh, a minimum amount of time and 20 to 30 minutes, I think is usually pretty standard. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that it runs for, a, for at least 20 minutes. So if you click, if this thing turns that switch on, even if home assistant or you go in and turn a button and switch it back off, it'll still run for 20 minutes from the time you turned it on and then it will turn it off. If it's already been running for 20 minutes at least, and then you click the switch to turn it off, it'll turn off. Okay. Schedule also overrides the heating mode also and constantly checking your schedule. So you don't have on off restart. I need to check that out again, stove doc. I, I've, I looked at it way back when, but I, at the time it was still, he was still changing it because it didn't end up, it wasn't called, maybe he was going to change it. He changed the name. So the last time I tried to use it was before the name got changed. I don't remember if the name got changed to Schedule or from Schedule to something else. I don't remember. Some buffer time or temperature? Yes. So there is also, so here's the target temperature and you can also set a temperature for away. And if you set a temperature for away, then you have to tell it, I'm trying to remember where uh, or how you set that entity, but you set the entity that you want it to know. Like if everybody in the house is away or if you just turn it to away, that's what it is. It's a state. That entity can have the state of away, like away mode state. You can go into Home Assistant and say, okay, if everybody on my list of people is not home or is something other than home, then set the thermostat to away mode. And if you set the thermostat to away mode, then it will automatically change the target temperature to whatever you put here. Okay. So this is what you're talking about, the hysteresis. Somebody mentioned like a buffer in the temperature. This is what I put for the buffers or half a degree. So that, that just means if you know, you don't want, again, you don't want your, your air conditioning to turn on at 70 and turn 
off at 69 or turn off. You don't want it to turn off at 69 and then go and then once it gets warmer to 70, go back up again. So you want a little bit of a hysteresis, right? A little buffer that says, okay, I'm not going to turn on right at 70. Like what did I set it to? 76, which is really hot. But if I set it to 76, it's not actually going to turn on until it gets to 76.5. And then it's not going to turn off until it gets to 75.5 because of the way that I set this hot and cold tolerance, right? And then this is where you get to tell it whether or not it's an air conditioner, okay? Uh, recommendations for smart ceiling fan control. That's a good question, Tyler. What I've done, just because it's simple, is I just leave, you know, span, fans usually have a few speeds. Um, I've just left mine on full speed and then just run it with a normal relay in the light switch. There are there are ways, and I think as far as I know, one of the best still, are you guys going to say this is accurate, is the uh, the Sonoff, uh, Sonoff i whatever it was, iFan, I don't remember. Because it had some, it has some different um, ways of controlling the speed. The, the difference was the voltage. The Sonoffs made theirs for the 220 volt world and not for the 120 volt world. So if you live in the, because they, they vary the speed with um, is it capacitors, something like that. Can't remember what the electronics were. I'm not really an electrician. Digiblur did a great video on it. Hey, great, Mike. Can you post it? Or shoot it, put it in Discord at least? Does Shelly 2.5, Stone Obscurity, is that what you use? Two of them, my wife says, they're the best part of smart home network I've done. Oh, awesome climate control to control my fans and out a sensor on the ceiling. Oh, cool. Anywho, I did two. You did which one? You, you, what did you use? What did you do too? So good enough. I'd like to know. I'm sure you were agreeing with something I said, but I don't remember what it was. All right, so then I just have another thermostat. This one is for the main floor air conditioning. Um, and it looks like I'm, so on this one, I didn't do the minimum cycle. You see that? I skipped the minimum cycle duration for some reason. Don't remember why. And then this is the heat one that I'm not gonna use. So I really only need, well, for the air conditioning side. For the air conditioning side, I'm only gonna use these two. Okay, I'm only gonna use these two. But before we do that, let's go in here and do the average temp sensor. Okay. So what we're gonna do, average temp sensor, we're gonna do a sensor that will be a min-max sensor. Okay, min-max sensor, we're gonna give it a name. We're gonna define what type of min-max it is and the type is gonna be mean. Um, and we're going to round the digits and then we're going to include the entities and I'll go through the new home system. We'll put the right entities in there and then we'll do, so we'll do one for upstairs and we'll do one for the main floor. Okay. So let's do that. Let's do that for realsies. Get this guy over here, go into our new dark mode visual studio code server being accessed over in security. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I already have some sensors here. This is my configuration.yaml in my blue. So I already have some sensors here and I'm gonna add new sensors to the top. That's how I've been, how I used to do it. This are new things, I add them to the top. That's why I just easier to know because typically if I mess something up, it's the latest thing that I added and if I put it at the top, it's easy to find. That's why I put my partially clean socks at the top of the pile, same thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, down here, and then we go back to, we're gonna shrink this so I can click back and forth a little bit easier. All right, so let's grab this sensor here. I'm gonna grab this min-max sensor, and we're gonna paste it in here. And of course, the spacing is all off. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the spacing is no longer off. I'm still going to leave average upstairs temperature as the name. I'm still going to leave all that stuff. The thing I'm going to change is my entity names. I don't know my entity names off the top of my head. So we're going to go in here and we're going to find the entity names. 
Best way to find them is probably to go into the integrations and Zigbee and find all of these devices. Okay. Uh, leak sensor, leak sensor. So that's a basement one. Uh, let's try. So this is the toy room. So this is part of the upstairs. So we're going to look at this one. This toy room temperature right there. Oh, I'm still in Celsius. I kind of want to do Celsius. Should I screw with my kids and use Celsius? I, I really, really, really want to. <laughs> I really, really, really want to. Okay, so this, I didn't, I renamed, I renamed these just as the name, but I left the entity ID as what it is when I put it in here. So I'm just going to use this entity ID. So I grab that entity ID, go back over here, and instead of the toy room, I'm going to use Lumi Lumi, weather temperature. And now the others are probably going to just be variations on that name, right? So the toy room is one of them. Uh, theaters downstairs. These are all uh, office multi sensor. This one I think is off by a bit. Uh, we're gonna use it. Office closet. Should I use the office closet? Cause it gets hot in there. I'm not gonna use the office closet temperature. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. Okay. Well, you know what? Those are the only Zigbee ones that I have. The other ones that I have are. Uh, we're just going to go here and we're going to find sensor. We're going to actually just search for temp. Okay. So here is the girl's room. Here's, here's, this one's good too. This is my office. So dad's office, wall switch, AM 2301 temperature sensor. This shows up here. This is awesome. This shows up here because it was automatically put in with Tasmoda because I updated that switch to Tasmoda. And so it uh, it automatically put in all these entities and gave them this name. And yes, you're right. Some of my Zigbee sensors finally do need uh, some new batteries. <laughs> okay, so we're going to replace that office temperature with that name. Great. Great. And uh, we're going to use the girl's room temperature name here. We can just copy it from there. We're going to change the girl's temperature. The boy's room temperature is not working. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. Um, main floor thermostat. You know, the, the upstairs thermostat, I think that might have been one of those ones. Was the upstairs thermostat one of those that... Uh, oh, nope, there it is. I was going to say, was it one of those that wasn't coming in uh, when I... Because I needed to... Do you remember that from last week? I had to turn off. So when you update... If you have an old Tasmoda device and you update it to newer Tasmoda greater than version 9.2. And then if you're using the Home Assistant Tasmoda integration, it will now be auto discovered. But for some of the devices, some of them it just discovered them, no big deal. Uh, but in order, for, in order to use the new Tasmoda auto discovery in the Home Assistant integration, you have to turn off MQTT discovery in the Tasmoda device, which is set option 19. In some cases, I was using set option 19. In some cases, I wasn't. For most of my devices, they were automatically discovered. But for some of them, I had to turn on uh, set option 19, which is the MQTT discovery, and then turn it off again. Once I turned it on and then turned it off again, they magically appeared. There's a new copy button next to the entities now, too. Oh, look at that. Copy. Hot dog. Thank you. Dang. The boys' room temperature, I think, is still on the fritz. Uh, that temperature sensor in the boys' room is on the fritz. Um, but that's okay. That's pretty good. That gives us uh, temperature in the hallway, temperature in my office, temperature in the girls' room, temperature in the toy room. So that's all of the rooms upstairs except the boys' bedroom. And I'll get that fixed and I'll integrate that later. So for now, I think that one's pretty good. That one's done. So we're going to save it. This, oh, control S is the best way to save it. Control S. Okay, we'll save that. But now let's do the next one before we get out of here. We'll do the next one. Another bummer about doing it this way is I have to restart home system, right? 
sort of setup for metric currently. Chainsaw permitting, have 10 fingers. Oh, chainsaw permitting, you have 10 fingers, you might not, forever. That button has been there for several releases now. Yeah, well, you know me. I don't know. Anything. All I know is 72F is close to 22C, right? Uh, I don't know. But I'm going to start using C in my house. My house is C. My house is C. I was arguing with the... Arguing. I was... Uh, not What are you, you going to call it? Um, bantering. I was bantering with the construction site guys. Because they're like... Well, I don't understand. They talk like that too. I don't understand this metric. Blah blah blah. Why use a metric? You know, I, it's so much easier to just go three eighths and seven sixteenths and fifteen sixteenths and eighteen thirty seconds. And I'm like, no, it's not. That is ridiculous talk. It's absolutely ridiculous. You measure something, you go, it's one hundred and eighty-five and a half centimeters. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Or it's one hundred and eighty-five point six centimeters. So much easier than 92, you know, 92 and three eighths. And then you're trying to figure out how many feet that is. Oh, how many feet is that? How many feet in 92 inches? And blah, blah, blah. So dumb. So dumb. If you're, so we're 152 centimeters. What's that in meters? 1.5. 1.52. It's so dang easy. We still drink beer and pints, but the rest of it is metric. Oh, I'm using freedom units, <laughs> nerd. <laughs> 40 is the same on both. Is it really? No, buddy. Piston broke. I think you're pulling my, I think you're pulling my leg. Use millimeters, much more accurate. <laughs> you use a mix in Canada? Metric all the way, man. Me metric all the way. I, I, I had to, I, ch I did change the, um, units in my car on my speedometer so i had my speedometer in my car using metrics but when the kids were learning because zach and zoe have been driving my car as they learned to drive zach did you know a year ago and zoe's doing it now so i um oh negative 40 maybe that's true yet so uh i i i had to change it so to miles per hour you know empiric or whatever so that they would know how fast they were going <laughs> I thought that was probably safer for kids learning how to drive. Okay, let's do the uh let's do the main floor temperature now. Let's see if it'll paste it in right that time. Nope. 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 Can I tab it over? Yep. 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 This is done. Wish I'd done it differently. Alright. That should do it though. Okay, so now we got some sensors to replace here, which uh, not all of them are very easy to see what they are, but we're gonna go, we'll start with the, uh, we'll go back to the Zigbee. Yeah, we'll start with you. This, this will probably all show them all here. All right, so now downstairs, downstairs temperature. See, this is the thing. Here, I don't know what Lumi weather this is. I don't know what Lumi weather that is, but we'll see if there's any that I do know. Main bathroom temperature. Okay, we can use that one. So the bathroom, this is the bathroom that's by the kitchen. And I've been calling that kitchen temperature, I think. Oh, no, main bathroom temperature. There it is. Oh, it's not even being changed. It's still called the same thing. That's because that's ESP home. Okay. Main floor thermostat. Okay. This one. Where that one is? Main floor thermostat. Oh, no. I can't use this one. I shouldn't use this one because that one is in the basement inside the mechanical room. So that one is on what I call my main floor thermostat, which is actually inside the mechanical room. So I shouldn't use that one. Either. Um, upstairs. Okay, really? Can't use any of those. So I'm going to go almost all the ones that are in the main floor in the basement are Zigbee. So in this case, Zigbee is going to be... Uh, is where we'll find all of these. So we're going to go to integrations. We're going to go to Zigbee devices and we're going to start finding them here. So guest room multi sensors. These are downstairs. So guest room temperature. See, it's a lot cooler. This is in the basement, right? Now, but that's that uh, begs the question do I want to include the basement temperature sensors? I don't think I do. I'm not going to, I don't want to turn on the air conditioning 
because of the basement. I don't want to average in the basement room temperatures. That might make the basement rooms colder, but they don't really need as much air conditioning. And then we're, we're, when we're worrying about this, we're worrying about it because it's hot, right? Okay. So we're going to do the main, but the main master bedroom, we will do that. Master bedroom is mucho importante. So we're going to do that one. This is the main master bedroom temperature right here. Okay. Pop that one in there. And then what else? So guest room, master office, piano room. Yep. That's kind of by the front door. There's a piano in there. That's why it's called piano room. I'm going to take that one. Copy that. And right here. Okay. What else? What else? Uh, piano room, theaters downstairs, toy rooms downstairs. Is that all I got? Probably need a few more sensors around the main floor, don't I? The master bedroom, the piano room, I don't, and, and then the bathroom. The main, main bathroom. That's all I got. You want to fill it up for me? Which one? Fill up this one. Okay. Thank you, sweetheart. Well, maybe what I need to do is add some uh, Zigbee temperature sensors down there. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got main. So this kitchen temperature one is going away. And this one here is going away for now. We can add some more later. All right. So that's that. What does this say? Configuration couldn't be parsed. It was referenced something something. What if I just ignore that? Would that be okay? <laughs> What's being done here? Setting constants per room right now. Uh, Hydus, we are setting. We are creating a uh, an a temperature, an average temperature sensor sensor. So I've got a bunch of temperature sensors all over the house, and I'm creating one average temperature based on all of those. And then I get to use that average temperature as the trigger for my climate entity, which is how you turn on the air conditioning. Bad syntax. Where is it? it should show me somewhere, does it, shouldn't it? What's up, Mitch? Yes, it will be. It will be targets for the animation, sort of. The look on your daughter's face when she saw the empty. <laughs> that one's empty. Ooh, it's full too. Did you already get a set? Since you were such a good girl and filled it up. That extra extra yummy out of the Aidendale mug? Yeah. <laughs> Shared something. Oh, okay. Thank you, James. Oh. Oh. First time cutting something on the CNC machine. Nice. How's it working? I mean, I guess it's the first time, so. <laughs> Dr. P, Dr. P, Dr. P. <laughs>
So the old way is go in here and find server controls, check the config. It's going to say, you screwed up. Nope, I didn't screw up. Okay, great. So now, since we're going to restart Home Assistant anyway, should we just update? Should we update at the same time? Loud. Need to frost those mugs like they do at the Cracker Barrel. Oh, that would be awesome. Frosted mugs. <sighs> just keep these in there. In the fridge. Oh, core check. You wrote it wrong from memory. <laughs> we'll forgive you. We'll forgive you. <laughs> okay. No, let's not. <laughs> let's just restart. Let's just do the. Let's just do what we know is gonna work. Uh, we'll do it. We'll do it at the end. Real quick. Okay. So now we're gonna do a restart because I edited my configuration.yaml. I will update Seamus. I'll update before we finish today. <clears throat> uh, does the average drive I see or send alerts for you to tune manually? The average that I'm making, uh, I'll show you what we'll show you what it does here in just a second. It's a it's a reference for basically a thermostat. So because I have multiple I have multiple zones where I have temperature sensors, but I only have one air conditioner that I'm going to turn on for those zones. And that, that air conditioner entity basically in, uh, in home assistant needs to have one temperature sensor as the reference. So if, if I chose just one of those, excuse me, temperature sensors, then I would be ignoring all the others and they would just be wasted data. We don't like to waste data. My mom always told me, eat all your data or you don't get dessert. Don't waste your data. <laughs> so we're going to we're going to take instead all those temperature sensors, average them and then give that average a new a, a, make that average a new sensor. And then that new sensor output is what we'll use as the trigger to change the the air conditioner state to on or off. Got it? Street Freaks racing videos. Ooh, that sounds fun. What do you got there? Orange Corvette? Camaro. Oh, is that an orange Camaro? Jelly. I want a Camaro. I want like a 70. Maybe 71. Need to do this. When my fireplace is running, the rest of the house gets cold. Oh, right. See, that's exactly right. Because, uh, because the fireplace is close to the uh, thermostat, probably, right? So here, here in the RV... Let me tell you about this. In the RV, uh, Mama, Mama Durs was really wise. <laughs> it's a vet. Oh, I'm so jealous, dude. Je so, je so do you make street racing videos? Do you have some good ones? Some cool stuff? You can post some links or something. That'd be awesome. Me and Dawson like to sit and watch street racing videos or any kind of car videos, honestly. Um, but in the RV, so in the RV uh, that we have that we that we use to stay in up at uh, Aidendale, the it's really dumb the way they've got it laid out. Nobody gave it much thought probably, and they just you know people build things and they sell them, and then they don't ever think about trying to. Well, maybe they've improved it since then, but they don't think about it at the time. So it's got a heater and a, a propane powered heater, and it blows out through I think it's three different vents, and but there's one that's like the first vent. Well, that first vent gets most of the hot air. And it is located right, it lo it's located on the ground at foot level, which is really nice because I like to keep my feet warm. So if I wake up in the night and my feet are cold, I just get up and stand in front of it for a few minutes and my feet get warm. <laughs> but it's located four feet, right, from the ground to sort of man you know switch height from the thermostat. So the kids at the front of the RV are freezing because... The thermostat thinks it's 70 degrees because it's getting all this hot air that's blowing from four feet away, so it turns off. And then the same in the master bedroom is a little bit better, but it's still colder in the master bedroom than it is right next to the thermostat. So having having the thermostat right next to the heat output is ridiculous. Like, who does this? Come on, give us like, just take 10 more minutes and think about it, and you'd come up with the solution for this, right? So the idea is instead of doing that, you put a temperature sensor in the front, put a temperature sensor in the back and a temperature sensor in the middle, and then you average them 
and you use that average to control when the heat turns on and off. Should add IDs to sensors to help with UI automations. Unique IDs. Oh, fireplace is probably drawing all the hot air and sending it up the chimney. Could be. Could be. All right. So it looks like we checked, uh, we got our entity or our uh, home assistant restarted here. So now if we go back to our sensors and we research for temperature, uh, there should be a new one. It was probably there, but ah, twimp. Average main temperature, average upstairs temperature. Ba -ba! And you can see it's definitely warmer upstairs. That makes sense. Two-story house, not very efficient. Sun on the roof, gets hotter upstairs, right? Same issue, fireplace makes the thermostat think it's warm in the house, but the it, but in the end it gets cold. The good part is the furnace air intake is near the fireplace, so quickly the fan runs and fixes things. Oh, that's cool. So it takes the fireplace heat and blows it back around the house, kind of. That's good. That's good. So in our hobbit hole, we don't have a furnace. It's all radiant heat in the floor. We do have a wood-burning fireplace that's mostly for aesthetics. It's not, it's not really there to heat anything up. It might be kind of nice to make your feet warm, whatever, but it's really just for looks. Um, so C sharp worm right now, it is not, but it will. So C sharp worm says is my node red flow sending MQTT messages to the new mega HVAC relay controller. Not right now, because I, I needed to not have a lot of downtime in this system, because this is kind of one of those mission critical systems in the house, right? Especially this time of year where we've got, you know, it's not always just cold days. Now we've got some hot days, some cold days. We're kind of in this in between. So it's really important that right now this system works. And I've just been too busy building a hobbit hole to go down in the in the basement and connect up all those uh all those switches, but I will, what I'll probably do is I'll do this so that it works. And then I'll take a I'll make a separate flow. That's the same. I'll just copy the flow and I'll change the names of some of the entities so that when it triggers the, well, actually, I don't even know if I need to change the name. Yeah, I, sh I will have to change the names of the entities. I'll just make new entities, new climate entities that will turn on and off those different, um, switches. So in my climate entities, I'll change the names. That's what will happen. Sometimes designers forget about function and go with aesthetics. Yeah. Or, or just simplicity, right, Chris? Sometimes it's just like, oh, it's like, this is where all of our, this is our control panel. You know, when the RV, you've got, this is where you check your battery temperature. This is where you turn your water pump on. This is where you turn on your inverter. This is where you check your tanks levels. So it's all right there. So, hey, let's put your thermostat there. Okay, we're going to put a heater here. Well, we got a heater here, and then we're going to put a vent out there, and a vent out there, and a vent out there. Okay, vents. Okay, great. We got heater. We got vents. We got control panel done. No thought to, oh, the hot air is going to blow out of here, and, well, the cold air is going to be a little different. So the cold air might be better because the air conditioner is up high, but click that like button. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate that, buddy. Sure, it's ventless. Gas appliances indoors generally require a vent so you don't die. Um, we will have a We will have a vent. We just won't have, we don't have a, uh, like air, like a, a, a forced air, a forced air climate control system, I guess is the way to say it. We do have vent. We do have like some air movement, um, out of the house and in. My bed is calling. Have a good rest of the day. See you, Peter. Peter, so I'm sure one that voted for in the morning or move the sensor in the RV. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do one of those kinds of things. Uh, but the RV still needs to be smartified. So, okay, back to this. So now we have our average temperatures. So now we can go back to here and we can copy over now our, these climate uh, entities, right? So we're going to take, so we're going to go back to Visual Studio Code here in the Home Assistant Blue. And we're going to make a new section and the new section is going to be climate. Climate. Boop. 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 Incorrect type array. Huh? Okay. And then our climate type is going to be generic thermostat. And actually this, uh, 
upstairs AC and main floor AC. So let's take those two. We're going to copy both those two. And we're going to put them here. Okay, now that I actually did put multiple things in there, it gave me, get rid of that warning that's an array, that, that this has to be an array. Can you guys not see that very well? I'm sure, I'm sure you can. Let's make it a little bigger. Whoa, easy, bro, easy. Oh, whoa. Oh. That probably means it didn't say what I just did. All right. Oh, no, it did. Okay, good. All right, so now we can, and we've got the same, Oh, we, we, do we have the same switch numbers? I don't think we, oh no, we do have the same switch names because those are ESP home as well. Hey buddy, you home? Very little, but it's in this. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Back to Node Red, this YAML stuff is so 2019. This is really cool. <laughs> Zach likes the mug too. Hi guys. Say hi, Zach. You said hi. Yeah. I can said they hi. can they see your? They can't see your head. No, they can no. never see your head. There's Zach's torso saying hello. <laughs> uh, you can use a template sensor to scale any sensor for accuracy or to change the effect that sensor has on the average. Oh, cool. A uh, template sensor. Okay, that's awesome. I've never really played that. Never seen his head. <laughs> I wish I could go back to 2019. You know what? Now that we're past 2019 or 2020, I'm I'm okay now. I'm I'm rad, I'm I'm good with 2021, especially because this whole Hobbit House thing has been so wonderful. I was thinking about it, of course, as we're driving home, and despite as much as we are over budget on it, and as and as some of the headaches and some of the disappointments and some of the things that have gone on. Overall, it has just been such a fabulous experience. Did someone say no red? No way. Nightbot says that? <laughs> nice. So good enough, you're awesome. That's so that's too cool. <laughs> okay. Um the upstairs AC. So those let me see if those switches are the same. I don't think they are. But I'm not hundred percent sure. Let's see. Yeah, main floor AC, upstairs AC. Okay, they are the same. Let's let's just click this and see. Uh, unavailable for a while. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, available. I don't like that. That makes me worried a little bit. But this should be part of Tasmoda. Okay, so this these were in these two. Yes, these are both Tasmoda. So they should have been. They should have come in the same. And then the other ones, the actual, um, the heat ones, um, they will have come in as well because they're ESP home. So we should be good with the same names. We shouldn't have to change the names. Now, let's go to the documentation. Read the documentation, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Home assistant. We're going to go to... This is... I'm not sure I remember how to go through all this stuff. Uh, climate. We're going to go generic climate entity. Generic thermostat. Thermostat. Yeah, this is it. Generic thermostat. That's what we built, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Configuration variables. Name. Unique ID. I should put unique IDs. You're right. I'll do that. Read the manual, you turkey. Heater required for heater switch there must be must be a toggle device becomes air conditioning switch when AC mode is set to true. So back here, all that. So you still you still use heater as the heading, but when you're in AC mode true, then you're controlling an air conditioner, even though your your actual entity that you're switching on and off, the actual relay, the actual switch on the air conditioning unit that turns it on and off you're you're putting it under the setting that says heater but since you say ac mode true it's actually controlling the ac okay all right target sensor required temperature sensors we've looked at that right minimum set the minimum uh set point available set the maximum set point available default up 
default set. So these are, let's, let's put that to, let's put this to metrics. We need this in metrics. We're going to do metrics. The, just the, the family is just going to accept that it's going to be flipping metrics around here. What we're doing. I'm the boss, except not today because Mother's Day. But, but after today, I'm the boss. And of course, we're going to change it. I know. Before you start screaming at me, we're going to change the target temperatures. I know. We're going to get there. Give me a minute. 35. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to have to go into Home Assistant and change the whole thing to do metric instead of... I don't remember how that is going to work. Just gives you the ability to make complex branching. <laughs> AC mode, alter, alter, alternating current mode? <laughs> Metrics everywhere. Man, just filled that up. It's gone. I feel like a hobbit every time I do that. Okay. Back to this. Uh, so AC mode we set to true. Target temperature. Okay. Initial target temperature. So what we'll do, the target temperatures that we had were probably pretty good. And I could change these target temperatures. I would like it to say, let's let's look at this. I would like it to save the target temperature. Set initial target temperature. Failure to set this variable will result in target temperature being set to null on startup. As of version 0.59, it will retain the target temperature set before restart if available. Okay. Now, I think that's what I want to do. I think that's what I want to do. That way, if I decide... Oh, it's extra hot. So I'm going to turn down the thermostat. So I'm going to go into Home Assistant. We're going to use now my old Home Assistant for a minute. We're going to look into here and we're going to say, okay, here are my thermostats, right? I'm going to turn this down. I'm going to set the target temperature lower. Next time I, the way, it, if I put the initial, or if I put the target temperature in here, then it will go back to what that target temperature is when home assistant restarts. I don't want that. I want it to look back at the last place I set this. Is that what it's going to do? Top metrics, but they seem to use binary. <laughs> Dad, it's too hot. Dad, it's too cold. <laughs> use an input number for initial. Create an automation for automatic filling of the cup measured by weight. I love it. That's so cool, Yona. That's so cool. What I needed to do is when the we what we need is when it gets too uh when it gets too light, that it, that uh, she who shall not be named Aleka makes an announcement that says Dad needs someone to come fill up his Dr Pepper. Oh man, we're gonna do that. We are so gonna do that. <laughs> um. Okay. So let me let me read that again. Make sure I understand that. Failure to set this temperature will result in target temperature being set to null on startup. As of version 5.59, it will retain the target temperature set before restart if available. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take it out. I'm going to take out the uh, target temperature. I'm just going to. Okay, so let's take out the target temperature. That way I get to set the target temperature if available. Well, if I set it once, will it be available the next time? Sure, good enough. Right? Like, so, so it would mean that only I can mend my ultrasonic salt sensor. Yeah, I could do that. Just point it at the cup. See how high it is? Maybe. If not available, it's broken. But if it, but if I put it in there, but if I, yeah, so if I put it in there, then is it going to use that so it doesn't go back to what I set it to before? And I really wanted it to go back to what I set it to before. We're going to try this. I'm not, I bit my tongue. We're going to try this. Hey, D. How's it going? You want to fill up my mug? I don't know. You don't know? Why not? Kind of hard to. Kind of hard. Oh, yeah. Dawson's a teenager. Will it be available after restart? Sounds like MQTT retain, but this isn't MQTT. Just upscale the beer hat idea. <laughs> um, I guess we'll have to see. 
If you put it in there, it falls back to that, but it should use the last setting if available. Let's do this. Well, I don't know. What should we do? What should we do? Hey, did, did you fill it? Turkey. Oh, no, it's downstairs. It's in the fridge out. It's in the fridge out in the garage. That is hard. I know. Well, if you want to share any, you got to go down there and get it. If you want some. It's the only way you're getting any. Try it, but watch it. Yeah, let's try this and we'll see what happens. If I don't like it, we know where to fix it, right? Okay. Don't touch your face. All right. Um, here we go. Moving on. Next step. Uh, AC mode, we did that. Minimum duration cycle. Set a minimum amount of time uh, that the switch specified the heater option must be in the current state prior to being switched to on or off. So I'm going to, I didn't have that in the lower one. So I'm going to add that to the lower one. We're going to do 20 minute minimum cycles. I think, and somebody said, I think the reason I don't have it in this other one, in the lower one, is because um, it was. Uh, part of the actual unit itself, I believe. Every time the value is changed, you could write it to something to verify that it works on restart. Hello, programs. Hey, Richard, how's it going? Oh, you know what? I haven't seen what's gone on in um, the Lumen Cash channel at all. Oh, thank you, James. Oh, I will totally. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I might finally end up using your your uh, smoke detector. <laughs> I hate my smoke detector right now. What is the strongest in Lumens smart A60 light bulb that you know of? Sorry for the out of context question. That's a bit of a squirrel, but, and, but I don't have a good answer. Does anybody else know? Uh, who has done that? Did Did Rob do tests of all those or a bunch of those? Or was that Travis or somebody else? Maybe, maybe it was... Uh, Maybe um, Paul Hibbert did that. Yep, a weight temp. We're going to set a weight temp. We're going through each one. All right, hot tolerance. The default is 0.3. I set mine to 0.5. I'm going to leave that. Keep alive. Set a keep alive interval. If set, the switch specified in the heater option will be triggered every time the interval elapses. Use with heaters and AC units that shut off if they don't receive a signal from their remote for a while. No, nope, we don't need that. Initial HVAC mode. Okay, I think I might turn these off. Set the initial HVAC mode. Valid values are off, heat, or cool. Value has to be double quoted. If this parameter is not set, it is preferable to set a keep alive value. This uh, is helpful to align any discrepancies between generic thermostat and heater state. Um... Set the temperature. So initial mode. I think I want the initial mode to be off. And the reason is, like right now, you can see that they're on. Like when they first start, they come, they're come. they on. And sometimes I want them off because my node red flow turns them off. So I'm going to set these initial state to off. I don't want them on when Home Assistant restarts. I want them off. Thank you for subscribing, whoever that was. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. What are we setting up, Sage? We are setting up um, climate control. We're setting up basically a thermostat. So it's a node. It's we're gonna get to a node red flow. Some of it <laughs> before time runs out. But this, uh, in order to have the node red flow um, turn on or turn off the air conditioning as a whole, we need to have climate entities and home assistants. So right now, this is climate entities and home assistant. And what we just did the last. 20 minutes ago or so was we set up a um, an average temperature sensor. So we took a bunch of Zigbee uh, and wired AM2301 temperature sensors and, and averaged them to turn on or turn off the air conditioning units on different floors, if that makes sense. Eventually. Eventually. But we'll get there. Oh, we'll get there. All right. Set the temperature used by preset mode away. This is not specified. The preset mode feature will not be available. Away temperature. 
Okay, well, away temperature. Let's set the away temperature. So what's the equivalent? Uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit. If we go 85, it's 30. So we're going to change this. And we're also converting to metric. It's freezing in here, Dad. It's only 30 degrees. <laughs> Okay, that may be everything we need to change. Precision, the desired precision for this device can be used to match your actual thermostat's precision. Don't need it. Time for minimum cycle duration and keep alive must be set hours, minutes, seconds, or it must contain at least one of the following. We did minutes, 30 minutes. Currently, the generic thermostat climate platform supports heat cool and off hvac modes you can force your generic thermostat to avoid starting by setting hvac mode to off that's what we're going to do please note that when changing the preset mode to away you will force a target temperature change as well that will get restored once the preset mode is set to none again so when you get to the preset mode, we'll, we'll walk through this in a minute, but the preset mode is um, a service call, like setting the preset mode is a service call. So that's how you can turn it off if everybody's gone. Are there any smart vents that can tie in for per room control? Um, I don't know of any smart vents, but I'm sure with a servo or a motor or something like that, you could do it. 30 seems a bit high. It is kind of high, but that's, that's only if we're gone. That's like if we're not home, let the house get it up to 30 degrees. It's hot. It's hot, but it's, it's the equivalent of turning it off, you know, without letting things melt while you're gone. Kasim, what do you guys set? I mean, uh, you guys that do metrics, what do you set your, or whatever, what do you guys set your away mode to on your thermostat? So nobody's home in the house in the summertime. How hot do you let the house get before you turn the air conditioning on? They exist. I don't have them. That's true. It's true. Do we need some that run Tasmoda? Is they good enough? What do you know? Tell us about smart vents. I would love to know. I also have my HVAC fan run every hour for five minutes to help circulate the air in the house. Since implementation of air quality and average house temperature has improved. Oh, that's awesome. What's up, mobile dude? Did you miss something? Oh, you know. A couple things. 26 to 28, Ikafar says. It's about 25. I have a train with Nextia app, but it doesn't have API for anything else. Therefore, no control through home assistant. Boo. It would take a lot of energy to get that back down to the occupied set temperature. Okay, well, that's fine. 18 Celsius? What, Simon? We never get to 30 in the summer, Kasim. You stinker. We cool it so the dog won't die. Well, I can turn it. I can I can uh, change it. Let's change it to 28. Okay. I'll come down a few degrees. Okay. I'll compromise. I'll compromise. I still haven't changed my... Oh, I took away my target temperatures. Uh, let's... So, uh, so let's do that real quick too. Let's go back to this for a minute. And I think what I had it set to was 76, right? Which is pretty warm. You know, we let it get pretty warm. But so we'll set this... Uh, if we do go back and turn on this target temperature, it'll be 24 Celsius. Okay. That may be it for this. That may be it. Okay. Uh huh. So we saved that. I think we're good. We're all the way through. And anything else in here? Let's look and see. Generic thermostat. So here's an example. We got that. 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 Yes. This. Yes. 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 We don't do keep alive. Off. Away. Man, see, he sets his off. His away at 16. Oh, it's because this is a heater. He seemed to false. Yeah, that's right. And precision pro. Okay. Well, that's it. That's all the settings we need. So we're done. We're done with those two. Let's uh, let's restart home system again. Let's do a recheck and a restart because we created new entities in the um, in the actual uh, configuration YAML. So we need to go back in and check everything here. I thought, man, I thought it was in. I thought there was a restart. 
Isn't there a S? Man, I thought there was a button that would get you really quick to be able to restart Home Assistant, but I guess not. Oh, wait, you said it was in here too. Let's do it in here. You said it was it was HA Core. Did you core check config? What was it? Ah. Oh, reload. Here we go. Aha. Well, it doesn't have, it doesn't give me the check. So that is it. It's down there at the bottom. Is there one to check? No. It doesn't give you the check. I like to check it. Just, I mean, it doesn't break anymore, right? So you don't have to check it if, if it, it's going to break. It'll still let you start it and then tell you that it broke. I'm just too old school for my own good. Too old school for my own good. Home away, I set five degrees higher. HA core restart. What about check? HA core check. Okay. HA core check and HA core restart. That makes sense. All right. We'll let that restart. I can't believe nobody brought me any Dr. Pepper turds okay i need some more kids these these ones aren't listening anymore i'm sure i heard frank say that the restart button checks the config in the last latest update can anyone else confirm oh really oh that's cool old curmudgeon how you doing brother somebody asked me how the progress is on the bug it's not <laughs> how you doing old curmudgeon thanks for being here we're gonna do this yeehaw I think you said it checked when you restart. Return them to Walmart. <laughs> okay. All right, we're gonna go back in here now. And oops, I just want to see how developer tools go. We can see if we got our climate. Great. There's our climate entities. Awesome. Preset none. And uh, it's, oh, you know what? It set it to the target temperature. It set it to the away temperature. No. No, it set it to the max. Oh, my. Oh, me, oh, my. Oh. Well, let's try this. So now let's do this. We're going to go here to uh, the Lovelace. This is my air conditioning page. We are going to add a couple of uh, buttons. So we'll add a card. Uh, we're going to add a, we're going to add a, oh, this is a good one to add. Let's add this just for kicksies. It's so big. Uh, let's get rid of this for a second. Delete that. We're going to add a card. We're going to make it one of those graph cards. Not graph cards. Uh, what's the one that puts them together? Oh, thermostat. We need this. Upstairs thermostat. Yes. Wow, that's monstrous. Dang it. Too big. Okay, what we need is... Oh, it might be so big because... It might be so big just because I'm zoomed in so much. Hmm... I think maybe we can make it a little bit smaller. Let's do it a little bit smaller. Let's do it a little bit smaller. So we're gonna delete this one again. We're gonna make it. Oh, thanks, D. Wow. That's why it took so long. Whoa, you're amazing. I knew you were amazing, but now you know you're amazing too. Oh yeah, you didn't even drink any first. Wow, grid. That's what I want. I want a grid. And then I think I only want two things in my first grid. And then I'm going to put in the first grid a thermostat. And the thermostat's going to be upstairs AC. Great. And then I'm going to add my second one is going to also be a thermostat. And it's going the second one is going to be the, the main floor AC. Oh, Dawson's asking me for more YouTube time. Certainly. All 
All right, there we go. So now we got those. I like that. That's perfect. That's perfect. Um, I'm gonna do the average temperatures too. Let's do another. Let's do another graph card like that real quick. Another grid card. I mean, let's do another grid. Grid mix is so nice. Like you don't have to do the vertical and horizontal stack so much anymore. You just do it as a grid card. Uh, and we're gonna do this one. Average upstairs temperature. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to let it be that right now, even though actually the maximum I will change. The maximum I will change to like 40. Okay. Oh, I like severity though. I like severity. So above, uh, let's say above, um, above 30 is going to be red. Yellow is going to be above, let's say yellow is going to be above 24. Five, because it's warmish in here, and green is going to be um, below like I don't know, twenty. Okay, that's fine. And then, oops, I'm going to add a second one. I forgot to add a second. One. Add another one. Make another temperature. And instead of the main temperature, it's going to be the average upstairs temperature. We're going to change this to 40. We're going to define the severity. I don't know if I'm going to like this, but we'll do it again anyways. 20, 25, and 30. Okay. Done. That's cool. All right? What do you think? What theme is that? That's a good question. I can't remember. I think it's called something blue. Um, I really like it. iOS dark mode light blue. That's what it is. Yeah, I like that better streetwise. Streetwise. Um I I would like that better. So we can I'm sure we can change that, right? Um but can we change it here? So it just goes green, yellow, red. I think I'd have to go in here and change change it to I'm Not sure how that would work. Both say upstairs. Oh gosh. They do both say upstairs. Because they are both upstairs. <laughs> Somebody's a dope. Oh, we're going to move it. So that one's number one. Okay. How's that? Is that better? Um. Yeah, where do you change that? Let's let's we have to look at that. Let's see how you change that. I wonder if you can change that to like blue. Yep. And green. And red. Uh, yeah, is that, is that gonna work? Uh, does it not let me do that? It didn't like that. It didn't like that. It won't let me delete it either. CDO problem reverse, so they match the above. Can I do that? Can I? Can I do that? Can I reverse them? They're not the same over the same. CDO, CDO seizure. All right, let's just turn the severity off. I'll just turn the severity off for now, and I'll I might play with it later. Okay. Anyways, all right. So that's that. Um, and now, remember, we were going to set this. So let's set this to whatever we decide to set it to. Okay. And then, um. Let's restart Home Assistant now. So remember, we've set this, you know, to about 25 for both of these. And then let's restart Home Assistant, see what happens. See if it's still there again. Oh, 
upstairs over upstairs. Oh, <laughs> I see. So that's a good idea. So I didn't have the upstairs in the main. I see the, the controls and the temperature. See, then reset. Okay, I'll do that next time. Not everything's finished reloading. And there it is showing what it was. So it's it kept it, right? Main over main. Yeah, let's let's switch those. Let's switch those. I, I understand. I don't want to trigger anybody. And it's just better. I actually like the main floor on the left. So I'm going to move it like that. There you go. So now I've got the main here and those there. Okay. Sweet. Now, after all that, we got 10 minutes to talk about Node Red. So back in the node red, here we go. Um, so this is what this does. Every 15 minutes, it checks the outside temperature. If the outside temperature is less than 26, is what it's looking for. So if it's less than 26, then it looks up here, It's because I just restarted, so it doesn't have a new, it won't do it for, let's change that. Why Why every 15 minutes? That's, that doesn't. Let me get every five minutes. Um, but if it makes you feel any better, we're going to be doing node. I'm going to be doing node red after I wake up from my nap. Oh, actually, probably not. Oh, I got to I gotta decide if I'm going to drive back up to Preston, to Idaho tonight or in the morning. I'm kind of feeling like I'll drive up in the morning and then drive back in the evening again. Put a lot of miles on the old truck. Time to do your thing, buddy. <laughs> node red, do your thing. Okay, so this thing checks the outside temperature and decides, is it above or below 26? If it is a below 26, so it's cool outside, then it checks to see, is the outside temperature below 18? Or is it above 18? Sorry, is it above 18? If it's above 18 and below four, let's, we gotta, we gotta open the other one at the same time. I gotta be, I gotta do this at the same time. Because I had this on the other one, I mean, my other home assistant, and it was working pretty well. And I just kind of, I'm reconstructing it, maybe with a few differences. But I'd rather go through, I know I could probably copy it, right? I could, but I'm just, I'm just, uh, for the for my own learning's sake. You know, because this is on dark mode. Okay. Thermostats. All right. Um, outside temperature. So then it says, is the upstairs AC on? So if it's below 26, basically, if I, I'm saying if it's below 26 degrees outside, I want you to check the upstairs AC switch. And if it's on, then I want you to turn it off. Okay. Same with the downstairs. If the downstairs AC is on, but it's cool outside, then I want you to turn the air AC off. If it's not super cold outside, and I could actually, no, this is right. This is what I want on this. It's down here where I needed it. I needed the climate entities. So if it's cool, if it's not just cool, but super cold outside, so this would be super cold. Let's go over here and see what I did. See them both at the same time. We're kind of comparing these two. All right. So outside temperature, outside temperature. Up here is is the quiet, cool, off. I wish I could copy from here over there, but I can't. So we're just going to take this. Current state. Current state. And we're going to say, is the quiet, cool, off? And home assistant and I think switch quite cool though. I think it might be called something different now, actually. We need to check. We do need to check. Let's check. Uh, no, no. Quiet cool. It may be called something else. Nope, still called quiet cool. Oh, switch quiet cool low. Oh, see, it's two words now. So it did change. Hit the copy button. Hit the copy button, Durs. Don't be a knucklehead. Okay. 
if quiet cool low is off okay then it'll take the next step so it checks the state and if it is off it's going to turn it on right and turn it on okay easy peasy right This oh now it's a turn off whatever. I'm just gonna do call service call service. So if that's true, we're gonna turn it on this way. Switch turn on. And we can just start typing it in here, quiet, cool, low. I know, I know. You're screaming at your screens. You're throwing your, you're throwing your, your things at the screen. Um, data, no merge. Output location, message payload. That's what this one was. I don't know if that would matter here. Uh, what do you use for the Dr. Pepper overlay when the squirrels in OBS? Uh, I go into, um, so I get PNGs that have a transparent background. I go into um, Final Cut Pro and I make the animation on a bright green background. Then I bring it into OBS and I add a chroma key to take away the bright green background. What is the outside temperature in winter here? I don't know what the average is, but it's low. Oh, there's the time. So here it is. Dun, 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 dun. 930 got 18 votes and 230 got 28 votes. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it 230. And we're going to stream till 4. But we'll also, I'll also stream at 930. But maybe only for a half hour or an hour. Or maybe for an hour and a half. <laughs> what do you what do you think guys so so 230 did win so as far as the calendar goes i'm going to put 230 in as the default we're going to go with 230 as the new default stream time for the rest of 2021 it will change again at the beginning of 2022 um but for now we're the best marlon thank you very much dr aiden is the best <laughs> Durs. yeah what's the weather in preston like Two streams a day. I would. I wouldn't mind doing two streams a day. I would. I hate to have. Like, I don't want to leave anybody out. I don't want to leave anybody out. What time? Pacific time. That that's Mountain time. That is Mountain time, and it will be available in the um, drz.com on the calendar. And then I think we have a calendar you know, right here. Um, I'm sure so good enough, or somebody can pop a button and make the calendar pop up. Just switch every week. I could do every other week. I, I'd have a hard time remembering very, but that's a good idea too. Um, if I only feel like I've got the juice to stream once, then it'll be 2.30. If, I, if I've got the juice to stream multiple times and the desire, which I always have the desire, really, then it'll be um, uh, my time is two hours before Eastern. Two hours. I'm on mountain time. So it'll be 2.30 MST or MDT, depending on the time of the year, I guess. All right, turn on the house fan, turn on the house fan. Du, 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 switch, turn on, quiet, cool, low. Done, done, done. This should already work. Um, This part here never did quite work, but I'm going to get it to work. It's going to say the quiet, cool fan is now turning on. Please turn off some. Send him more juice. Cheers, Steve. How's it going? Far too clever? No. Shucks. One thirty Pacific. That's right. Eleven thirty in the UK. So it's about an hour later. Wrong emoji. <laughs> Tony's got a question. Tony, let's answer Tony's question. I think we were successful over here. I'm going to do the rest of this tinkering around, but but basically that's the same. Oh, and then the other one here is if the let's look at this real quick. So if the outside temperature is is high ish, right? So we're up here, or if it's if it's cool-ish. We want to turn off the 
the heaters. Oh, this, I didn't make all these climates, but I will. Uh, but down here, down below, switch, yep, we did that. Turn on. So if it's hot, it's greater than 26 outside. That's weird. What's wrong with this? Why does it say man? Hmm. I don't know why it says man. What's the problem there? This is getting its temperature from the same place. Maybe it's because it hasn't run yet. Do I need an input just to make it run? Inject. Just injected a timestamp that doesn't help. Will that turn it on? Yeah. Whatever. I'll figure it out. Um, let's go to stream questions for a minute. I'm actually pretty tired right now. Actually tired. It's almost like I was. Got my butt kicked building a dome the last few days. All right, let's let's see what we got for questions in the live chat. Questions, and then we'll get out of town. We'll get out of town today. Questiones, questiones. Okay, here we go. Uh what is greater than twenty six degrees here in nineteen eighty six? Remember, we are oh. All right. Here we go. Answering stream questions. Answering your Q&As. Andre says, what is your hardware setup for videos for live streams? What kind of mic camera do you use? Okay. Um, I use a Blue Yeti mic. Thank you very much for subscribing. Morgadon. Oh, Morgadon. That sounds like, a, you sound like an evil villain. Morgadon, are you an evil villain? <laughs> Brian. Brian also sounds like an evil villain name. Whoa. <laughs> um, okay. That's for you evil villains for subscribing. Thank you. Uh, so I'm using a Blue Yeti microphone. I'm using a Logitech 920. And this one is a 922 camera. This one needs to be adjusted. So I have two webcams. Blue Yeti microphone. Um... I'm using Reaper to kind of modulate the modulate the sound so it like cuts out the sound of the ceiling fan and a lot of the background noise, my my other stuff that goes on around the house. So this is a really nice feature for cutting out background noise and also for making my voice sound very sexy. <laughs> and then OBS and Restream. Restream IO is how I do both. Twitch and YouTube at the same time. As opposed to Justin, I like being, you know what I like being called? I like being called Durs. My, my son's um, friends, Jackson and Zach's friends started calling me Durs when we were, we were playing Xbox together years ago and they started calling me because my name was Dr. Z's on there, but they, they saw it and saw Durs. And so now like they seriously come over to the house and they're like, Hey Durs, <laughs> I like it. Um, I didn't see the first part of what you were saying there, Richard. I didn't see the first part of what you were saying though. So, Martin's here. Can we do two thirty-five? Getting my nails done. You stinker. <laughs> Very white. <laughs> uh, so there we go. And then it is on a Windows Ten PC, ten eighty video card, uh, i seven four seventy K, something like that. But I need. To, I'm gonna probably end up with a new one before new computer before too long, unfortunately. Okay, so that one's checked. Next, what specs PC are you running Blue Iris? Or did I switch to Real Link NVR? I did, Tony. I did switch to a Real Link NVR. And I like it quite a bit. The, the downside 
is that I cannot get my camera images into Home Assistant um, because it doesn't do RTSP to the network in general. Although there are some people who've been able to get some things and I, I did get a message. Was it Seamus or Ikafar? Somebody sent me a message in Discord with some information about how they did it from the NVR. So maybe it's possible. Um, I know there's a real link integration now in Home Assistant, which might be able to bring in the NVR feed. If it can bring in camera feeds from the NVR, that would be fantastic. But I, 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 up to this point, I haven't been able to make that happen. And that was why one of the reasons why I switched from Blue Iris to the real link NVR was because Blue Iris was pretty hardware heavy, hardware intense. And I, and I didn't want to have a dedicated computer just for that. And I had to, it got to the point where I was like, I had to turn off Blue Iris so that I didn't have lags in my stream and stuff. So, so that's where I'm at on that. Blue Iris is fantastic. And if you have a variety of different cameras and, you know, I know that there's a bunch of new AI stuff available for Blue Iris, which is super cool. Um, I don't know how much my, my Blue Iris or my, uh, Real Link NVR does. AI. I don't think it does very much or very well, but I've been very happy with it for what it does. Um, so some of them, Thanasis, some of the real link cameras do have RTSP feeds, but not all of them. They also have a line of cameras that are only for their NVR. And the nice thing is their, their NVR only cameras are super cheap. It's like a four, four mega, four megapixel four or five megapixel camera if it if it is their nvr only uh it's like 35 dollars. it's really pretty cheap um and everything's poe now because their nvr does poe so everything's poe so i run one cable to wherever i want a camera and i'm done so i like it quite a bit i'm very happy with it and the real link people don't know how happy I am because I haven't made a video for them about it yet. <laughs> Lots of questions about Dig Uno, Dig Quad. Any news? Um, Quindor was here and now he's gone. I should have asked that while he was here. Um, so the news is that it should be on the way. I have not gotten, I have not gotten the notice that they've shipped, but they should have shipped soon. How can we put fan mode in climate? Well, uh, you could try no knowers. You could try like I don't know how it would work exactly, but you could try making your heater entity the entity that you use for your heater element here when you're specifying what switch to turn on and off. You could specify that. You can make that a uh, a fan if you want, probably. One hundred fifty dollars ish. Oh, there's Quindor. What do you say? Let's say Doctor Z's will have them in about two weeks. Really gunning for that. There you go. What was it you were saying, Blade? What's a, what was $150 each? Oh, how much is the NVR? Oh, not it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh Real Link has right Real Link has really been a good camera company. I'm really happy with them. And again, I they don't know how well I've promoted them because I haven't made a dedicated video. They even asked me the other day, I said, I keep talking about it in my streams, but I haven't made a dedicated video. And they're like, well, can you tell us, you know, where you put it in your stream? And can you, can you make it, um, can you make it, you know, put the real link in the title and stuff? And, and yeah, I could, it just takes time. I just haven't taken the time to do that. Um, but I love their cameras and they, and they've, uh, I've got such good Video footage here is going to be another sneak peek for you guys as we sign off. Let's look and see what's going on up at Aidendale today. We're going to look at the camera up there at Aidendale right now. and We'll see the dome for a second again. There it is. So this is the real link camera up there at Aidendale. And it's such a good camera. Like I've gotten such good pictures and such good video from it. So I'm very, very happy with it. And all of my cameras, uh, this is a front yard camera, which is also a battery powered a solar plus battery camera that's in the front yard pointing at the house, which I also love. And I love that I can put these in my NVR. This one's taking a minute to connect. I haven't gotten there yet. It says it's connected, but it's clearly not. Anyways, and then I've got all my cameras around the house, right? <laughs> that's all stuff that's going to be moved into the hobbit hole. Kids are eating. Ooh, is it lunchtime? Oh, I better get down there and get me some lunch. 
Anyways, I love my real link. It's been great. Uh, and you were asking, somebody asked about the NVR. So the one I have, POE cameras and NVR. So the, this is the, this is the NVR I got right here. Whoa, where'd it go? Why did it disappear? There it is. So this is the one I have. It's the 16 camera model, 280. So 200 for the eight camera model. There you go. All right. TV show killed my camera connection. Maybe. Yeah, they, <laughs> they saw. <laughs> He's sharing video again. Block him. DDoS attack. Go. Last resort, you can use HDMI out of your NVR. $20 capture card. Raspberry Pi using Nginx or SP stream. Oh, Chris, you got some creative way to do it. Yeah, that'll work too. Um, so two weeks on the Did You Know's Dig Quads, and then can someone someday make a video or stream exclusively on templating? And I did see Sir Good Enough say something about that, but I don't remember what it was. Templating is templating is com is complicated. It takes a little bit of understanding, and I can't say that I totally know how to do it very well all the time. Um, the the way to learn to play with it is in this template page right here. So. If you want, see this template, <laughs> this is me trying a template and it obviously didn't work. Um, but if you want to try a template, you put what you think it should be here and it will show up over here if it's right. This is obviously not right. So. Ask when's the next node red stream. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, that was fun, guys. We are past our time. I am super tired and I drank too much Dr. Pepper and have to use the little boys room. I pressed my sign off button and nothing is happening. So let's just tell the kid. They're going to come running now. Oh, surround it with those. Hi kitties. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. So I don't remember what I was trying to do with this template, but now you can see that the template worked. <laughs> so where, uh, so I guess in here is where you can find information about templating. Um, but yeah, you're right. It does take a lot to, to read and understand. We don't want it to overflow is right. And here. Okay, so templating is super powerful. If you can figure out how to do templating, um, you it, you'll you'll ha open a whole new world. Vanessa's here. How's it going? Have a good night, guys. I was listening quietly. Oh, thanks for being here. Here it is again for those of you who are just dying to get your hands on an Edendale mug. We're so happy about this. So cool. So fun. Thank you, Tech Turtle. Uh, all right, girls. How should we sign off today? No, 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 no. We we're gonna do as a turtle. I've Signing off like turtles. Okay. Ready? As, as always, as thanks as for as watching. As Until, as next as time. As Until next time. Adios. Adios. I forgot turtles are in slow motion. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, Adios. guys. Adios. Thanks, guys. You remember me. Say hi. I'm sure they remember you, dear. <laughs>